Hello, my name's Oliver Hull and I'm from GameOfVids.org. Today I'm going to be doing a review on the game Test Drive Unlimited 2. <music> Test Drive Unlimited 2 is probably one of the largest games I've ever experienced. It offers way more than £40. It attempts to control the player in a vast game by using a progression system. The system expects you to advance 60 levels by completing 4 key areas. Competition, Collection, Discovery and Social. Competition gets the player using their racing skills to complete racing license objectives, championships, club events, duels, multiplayer challenges and instant challenges. As a player I enjoyed the fact they kept a variety. Collection is a much slower aspect of the game. You travel around the map finding stores to purchase items such as vehicles, houses, furnishings, clothes, haircuts, cosmetic surgeries and car stickers. This game has a lot of depth. However, not all the stores were unlocked straight away, which bugged me, because I couldn't modify the performance of my car for some time. Discovery is again a lengthy side of a game. With two islands to go and visit and over 1,500 miles to cruise on, it's one hell of a large map. Saying this, in free ride you'll be travelling with other online players, which almost makes it feel like a MMO. However, driving around isn't the only thing you can do, in Discovery you're also asked to become a photographer and take scenic pictures, as well as finding wrecked cars, which I found quite lame. The last aspect of the game is called Social, it encourages you to make online friends, join clubs, do other player homemade challenges and join in community challenges. This is really sweet, but it kind of leaves players stuck if the game isn't as successful as has hoped. I think it's brave of Eden Games to leave 25% of the game down to online players. What I mean by this is you're kind of relying on other players joining the game. If there's no other players, you can't really achieve any social points. Each of these four areas can take hours upon hours to complete. This further proves my point that the game is well worth over £40. It may seem a lot already, but I've barely touched the surface into the detail of the game has to offer. For example, owning your own club online gives you a lot of things to do. A members list, promote certain members to higher levels in the club, Upgrade your club to new levels giving it new privileges, accepting donations from members to help enrich the club, and set the club identity card as well as setting entry requirements. To keep the player interested in all these objectives they attempt to implement a storyline. The story doesn't really take itself too seriously, I hope. The game is really predictable and does a lazy job to try and show you any real reason to do any of their races. For example, in the first 10 minutes you make some racing lady late for her interview. She then, after making her late, asked me to drive her to the interview in her nice spanking Ferrari. You get me there in time, and I'll get you a spot in the biggest racing competition in history. The Solar Crown. Sound like a fair trade? Why would she let me drive her Ferrari if I've just made her late? Then, after I got her there, she uh, asked me to race alongside her, eventually taking her winnings. Because the story is almost laughable, you end up feeling less attached to the story. Saying that, it does have some very underlining comedy, which made me chuckle. Let's go to the garage. I've got you a surprise that I'm sure you're gonna like. Another key area which I wish they had a second look at is the first person motion when inside a building. Sure, it makes it more immersive, but the motion is sluggish and doesn't really feel very fluid. This is a small aspect of the game but it's a fine example of something they didn't need to implement. The menu inside of a building would have been fine. Despite these disappointing areas, it's all forgiven when you step outside onto the map. The map is so vast it will take you a great deal of time to get from one area to another. I love this, I really do. It's so rewarding to constantly be discovering new areas of the map. Not to mention the detail in this map is actually incredible. All the cars feel very different and they've done a great job of making them feel realistic. The roads, which got slightly bashed in the first game, are detailed and varied. The brass dirt tracks were actually really fun to drive on. Maybe they should make a rally game. The game is so beautiful and they do an excellent job of combining light, sound, terrain, and it makes some really nice atmospheres. In short, this is an amazing simulation game. That's it. They didn't need to implement the deep story. However, you can forgive them because of the vast amount of playtime you're going to be offered. My hat does well and truly come off to Eden Games, I would have paid double for this game quite happily. I'm going to rate this game an 8.7. It does a great job of making detailed maps and atmospheres, however, the first person motion and storyline are lacking. 
Okay guys, this has been Ollie Hull doing a review on Test Drive Unlimited 2. For more reviews, tips and tricks, go to GamerVids.org. And of course, remember to rate, comment and subscribe to our videos.